everybody. Happy Monday. Come on in and sit down because you're about to listen to another near hour of The Black Files. I'm your host. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What you don't see is we're all spanking him because he's a jackass. <laughs> no, we're doing it because he likes it. Hey man, make sure you get both cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, business time people. No homo. We're here for good news because this is going to be one of the best ones that we had yet. Of course, no homo. Anyways... I am Jose Casabona, your host. Joining with me right now are Juan Arouse and Angel Mendez, our two returning, uh, recur, returning. But you guys are, oh, oh, you guys are basically what? permanent black. How can we return We're, if we never left? Don't call it a comeback. We've been here since day one. That's yeah. true. Although we do have a fourth member of the flock joining us right now. Say hello to Michael Mendez. Hey everyone, it's me, Michael Mendez. I'm the guy who's not really noticed a lot in the Ravens flock, but um, it's a pleasure to meet you all. He's the one that usually appears behind the camera, making sure that the entire place doesn't fall apart. And also, so he's the unsung hero, and also, he's joining us today for this one. Also, kids, speak up. It's all right. You're, don't be afraid of the camera. It's a gigantic big blue ball of death, but that doesn't mean it's out to steal your soul. Just because so we... yell as hard as you can into the big blue ball. You see that red light? That's not a weapon. I shit you not. That is totally not a weapon. 100% non-lethal. What does that mean He says here? that now, but, you know, he doesn't know about the cancer he's got. Does that explain why this thing was sent to me by mail by dudes in hazmat suits? Yeah, and you might have noticed that there was, like, some powder all over it. They, they said it was some sort of something or whatever. I, it I glows in the dark. Oh. Yep. All right. Enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah. Now, of course, before we go into this fun edition of The Black Files, I would like to point out to all our first-time listeners out there, and yes, I have to keep mentioning it every time. What? You're such an idiot. Why don't we just put, like, a card in the beginning? Of our something? lawyers demand oh, yeah. that we say it. Fine, you jackass. Here you go. Yeah, all right. Now, let me get to it. The Black Files, while in conjunction and under affiliation of our YouTube channel and the Ravens Flock, has a completely different format to what you're used to seeing on our web show. Here, we have no time limits, no segments, no cutting into any videos. Well, of course you can't because it's a podcast. And best of all, no restrictions. However, we also have to point out that any opinions spoken by anyone participating on this program are solely the opinions of that particular person and not any expression of any other program, convention, or other organizations. And of course, any resemblance to any persons living and or dead and or near dead and or about to die is completely coincidentally and has nothing to do with all the bloody crap that we keep in the back of my car. Now, do keep in mind that we that we don't just shit uh, shit out without any information. We do fact check. We fact check as much as we can. But if there's anything that you think that we're wrong about, then please fact check for us. Reply to us. Leave a comment uh, or something or anything. Respond to us. We've got uh, we're, we've got our fingers in every single social net. We just started using our Tumblr properly. We're tweeting all over the place. We're all over our Facebook. And uh, we obviously uh, broadcast mainly on YouTube, for crying out loud. So, people, fucking talk to us. For we have star for attention and this for attention. Why do you think we do this? You think I like doing this for my health? No! I am horribly deprived of human contact and interaction. Even That's why I hang around with these losers. Even though you're married with child and a loving family already? Right? <laughs> these losers! <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, today is Monday, the 23rd of June, and it's a special, and like I said, it's a special edition of the Black Files. Uh, if you notice that it, it, instead of our ugly mugs around here, we put up you know, the, the most highly recognizable fucking video game characters in the last 10 fucking years. And the reason why we did that is because last week there was the E3 conference, which basically, Juan, can you translate it for them? <laughs> Yep, that's pretty much the, that's pretty much E3 in a nutshell. Now that you successfully lost the use of your ears, your headphones, and the wall on the other side of your room, we can actually talk about what the hell we saw there. Oh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> Scream, squealing aside, the E3 conference is basically uh, uh, basically it, for those of you who are absolutely useless as nerds and therefore do not have proper nerd credentials. Here's a mini tutorial about E3, the Electronics Entertainment Expo. Basically, all the gaming companies all over, even the major ones who put out... Especially the major ones. Yes, who provided us with the beautiful platforms such as the Nintendo Wii U, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and so on. They all get together, like what, once a year? Yeah. They all get together once a year to show us what they've been progressing on in terms of new video games, in terms of improvements on game consoles, and the list goes on. 
Yep, that doesn't stop there. There's all sorts of doodads and technological horseshit that makes everybody squeal in their pants. Kind of like that scream that you heard us uh, shout out just now. You probably heard this a couple of times before, but allow us to give you the basic rundown on the progression of how an E3 works. First, the company comes out to the big-ass podium, and they spend an hour and a half giving you a speech that will make you fall asleep. In between an hour and a half, you see trailer of games that you know you're going to spend your life savings on, and that's basically what the E3 boils down to. Yep, and everybody gets a turn. Everybody not, gets hard. Not just not, not just the console you know, developer companies, but each individual soft, you know, video game developer and uh, electronics uh, you know, consortium come together in order to promote their products and software and or other shit. Why? Because it's fucking awesome. It is fucking awesome. And you know what? Before we get to the games, let's talk about the improvements on the, the new platforms from the uh, from the uh, from PlayStation, Xbox, and uh, Wii U. Well, actually. Let's cover the Xbox One. They finally made their console backwards compatible, so you can now play games from the Xbox 360 onto your Xbox One. I kid you not, when we, like, my wife and I were actually watching that stream last Monday, and there was a live uh, chat feed right next to it, and the moment we hit, the, the moment the news of backwards compatibility hit, everyone's response was the same. Shots fired! Shots fired! Down goes Sony! Down goes Sony! Down goes Sony! And now you understand the most basic tenant of the entire E3 is so you can shit on the company you don't like. So in essence, this is Nerf football. Well, exactly. (laughs) This is this is fantasy football. No, no, this is the NFL draft of nerdhood. Why? Because video games are fucking awesome. Dress on your favorite team colors, grab your flag, and charge at the other guys on the other side of the issue. Because fuck them for not buying the things that you buy. If this isn't polarizing enough, just know when Electronic Arts, also known as EA Games, actually came out with some of their sport uh, sports based video games, everyone decidedly booed jeered, or simply remained indifferently silent. There was a couple of cheers for, uh, here and there for the stuff, but not that much. But however, EA did get a lot of raves and reviews for one game in particular that I am... Oh, so get it out of your system. Excited. Get it out of your system. Do Star now. Wars Battlefront! <laughs> Holy shit! For those of you out there who don't know, Juan Arouse is a huge bona fide boner, uh, boner approved uh, fan of Star Wars. <laughs> approved by his boner. He slaps his dick on every copy he can I find. don't give a damn about what anyone says. I watch all six, in order and out of order, all the time. I introduced my son to it before he even started learning how to read, speak, or walk. And <laughs> motherfucker, I read to him sometimes the freaking novels, yes, both sure, from sure. the original expanded universe and the new canonized shit by Disney. Why? Because Disney World. <laughs> Just show up and say, hey, daddy, what, how come all my teachers are Wookiees? Because they're racist, son. That's why. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, for those of you that saw the trailer, we see this beautiful, like, six minute long presentation constantly well, switching no, no, hang, points of view non Hang on a minute, Angel. Hang on. Since this, is, since this is Juan's favorite obsessed game right now, uh, I think we should let well, Juan to, cover the bases well, of well, what we saw. Well, I have right. two basic freaking games that I'm geeking over. What One's Battlefront over here, uh, the other we'll get to in a minute. Um, basically. You have a dramatic, awesome, in-depth reenactment of one of the most iconic battles in the Star Wars movies. The Battle of Hoth from Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Holy shit. Everyone, from old schoolers to new schoolers, can all honestly say hands down, The Battle of Hoth, one of the coolest fucking fights in all the movie and you get to play it you get to play as an imperial you get to play as a rebel you get to fly snow speeders tie fighters x-wings you get to do it all you're running around with a fucking like the heavy machine gun of fucking blaster rifle no i kid you not this guy you're fucking running through the trench and he's got a fucking heavy machine gun all over the fucking snow troopers lasers all up in this bitch <laughs> <laughs> Right, it, it does it, it does it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. It does not end there. Granted, uh, uh, like before E three came out, there was uh, there was news about the, uh, about this game. If if anyone who recognizes the original Star Wars Battlefront games, take that sort of concept and elevate the quality of the production of it, elevate the quality of the gameplay, elevate the quality of the uh, story aspect to it. And of course, you sacrifice space battles, but you but in place of that, you get two things: you get 
suborbital battles where you're in the upper atmosphere, so you can actually, you know, skyjack into a fucking building, like, flying Star Destroyer by crashing into it like a boss. <laughs> and one gorgeous little scene that they did not take away from the original Battlefront games, thankfully. Go for it. The finale in that in that fight in the Battle of Hoth had you playing as a as a rebel uh, a trooper shooting down other uh, shooting down Imperials when some of your comrades start getting levitated in the air and being force choked to death. And then you hear the familiar breaths, <sighs> and everybody gets hard. <sighs> yes, wait, Darth wait. fucking Vader in a spit to the cannon. But who cares? It's who gives fun. a shit? It's cool, shit. right? actually storms into the Battle of Hoth on foot, motherfucking chops niggas down. Why? Because people get killed. And who's there on your side in the Rebel Alliance to stand up to him? None other than Luke. Motherfucking shoot your exhaust port that's two meters wide up yo ass, Skywalker! Granted, he's actually dressed in his Return of the Jedi outfit and he's got the green lightsaber, so gigantic canonical discrepancy... But who cares? <laughs> it's fucking awesome! You, like, it actually ju- has you leaping forward, jumping in, deflecting lasers, and jumping d- immediately into a parry against his baby daddy, Darth fucking Vader. You are forgetting the most important part. The lightsaber kills everything he kills. It hits in one shot. None of this bullshit force unleash. Let's do a Devil May Cry 25 head combo to kill one. Do- no, it's a lightsaber. If it hits you, you're gonna die. Yep, if it chops your arm off, boom, arm off, gone. It stabs you, boom, you're fucking dead. With this fucking lightsaber shit, but, uh, uh, holy fucking shit. Yeah. All right. I, no, dude, I, I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna concede to that one. That's actually fucking awesome. You get to play as fucking Luke Skywalker. Well, you, yeah, and you get to play as random rebel soldiers. And random rebel soldiers. Watch out. How about that video clip of, of when a rebel soldier took over the ATAT? Holy fuck! <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Like the thing is, I actually remember back in uh, Rogue Squadron Three Rebel Strike. Where there was one little cutscene in one mission where you have to commandeer an ATAT, but it really doesn't do anything in terms of actual movement for you. All you're doing is literally you push the control stick forward, make this friggin' walker walk down, and you hold down the triggers to make it shoot everything in sight. There's no actual experience of, okay, I'm commandeering, I'm jumping in, I'm killing motherfuckers inside this big walking death tank of death. I shoot the motherfuckers who are driving this thing behind the back of their heads. I move their ass aside and I fucking commandeer their walking snow tank of doom. My God Almighty! Can, like I can only I can only geek so far. I, I can only geek so far. Sweet merciful Jesus! Now I'm pretty sure that Juan's not the only one who's got a boner for Star Wars. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of you fans out there who are just as stoked about this new game of Battlefront, as he is. And for those of you who are not a fan of Star Wars, at least appreciate it that, they, that some of the features in the new game of Battlefront are pretty fucking kick-ass. But the really great thing is that the developers for, the, uh, for Battlefront have gone out of their way to go into the Lucas archives to hand-study and sculpt and model in true homage to Industrial Light and Magic fashion a fucking, you know, like checking out the models used for the vehicles and for the terrains and stuff. They Okay, for a speeder bike on Endor, they went to the California Redwoods where they actually filmed those scenes for Return of the Jedi and they actually did, like, video capture and film capture and everything and their mother for it. They did everything. They went to Norway to film the stuff for the Battle of Hoth. They went down to South America to take a look at the temples that they used for Yavin 4. They went out to Tunisia to film stuff of Tatooine. Okay, dude, look, we, we, we get it. We get no, it. No, that, that's fucking, that's dedication. I that know. is art! Video game interactive storytelling art! All right, but remember, we have other games we got to talk about, dude. We have a long list to go. I know, we only a quarter of the way through the podcast. Exactly, let's shift actually, gears. Actually, let's it's shift. over an hour, nearly an hour, so that doesn't mean it has to be a full hour. Fair so enough. Kiss the shit. Fair we'll go over. All right, well, I'm fair going enough. over! Let's talk about let's talk about the improvements from uh, Sony from PlayStation Four. Any news? Nothing has happened. We oh got more boy. games. That's all there is. <laughs> Ouch! Yeah. No, no, it's fine though because we got good games. Now that we jumped into the area of the Square Enix, for those of you that let's were, let's get it out. Let's okay. get it out. Okay, guys. Let's, okay. How many okay. years ago did Final Fantasy VII came out? Nineteen ninety-seven, ninety-eight. So yeah. that makes no, it. Other than it doesn't matter, guys. It's been a 
freaking long time, and everybody's been screaming their dicks off for a remake. Okay, now, granted, no one is going to argue this. Final Fantasy VII is, without a doubt, the game that placed the series on the map. It also it's, was the game that guaranteed that the PlayStation would get an edge over Nintendo at that time. Why? Because it was one of the first games to come out with full 3D cinematics, or, like, a full, three, no, full musical score, and an incredible new engine that, at the time, was innovative and exciting and absolutely unparalleled to anything else. And let's be honest, everybody, I don't care how blocky or how crappy the graphics look now, the first time everybody saw those things, they shut their pants. Oh, yeah. But anyway, That's... basically, it's been a hell of a lot. Let's do PlayStation 1, 2, 3. We got, we've been four generations away from there, not counting the handhelds. It's about damn time they got a good remake, and they basically announced it with a fanfare of a fart in the middle of an empty room. Hey, guys, for the way, Final Fantasy VII. No. And then, ah! and then the trailer came out, and everybody exploded as their testicles bounced off the walls like fucking pinballs. Now I'm gonna say this right now. Yeah, I'm okay. a fan. No, no, hang on, guys. Actually, I'm a fan on. of seven. Actually, I'm a fan. F- one, one, no. Checking. All right, do okay. fact checking while I talk. I'm a fan of seven. All right, hands down. I've played. Uh, I played seven before. I've seen Advent Children. I've played Dirge of Cerberus. I have yet to touch Crisis Core, but I'm getting there. I it's am okay. getting there. Get the antidepressants with you. Oh, God. <laughs> when I saw the news of the remake of Seven, I tried looking at this from both views. On one side, great, awesome, they're coming out with a remake, it's about time. I mean, as much as I enjoyed the original, it's nice to keep, it's nice to, you know, recycle something that was really It's, an, cool. it's a refresher. It's, it's a nice a refresher, refresher to give people... No, it's, it's, okay. it's like a, like an HD collection. Dude, something speak like up, motherfucker. Louder. This is why we keep you behind camera. It's like, an, it's like an HD collection, just, you know, like, um, they already made a remake of this... Uh, yes, so, yeah. but on the it's other really HD. But on the other side, I can see like from the different perspective, like dude, w- w- leave seven alone. No, we've already we can't. Done... Oh, no, no, we can't leave it alone. We, we've already done enough of it. We have to focus on progressing forward with the Final Fantasy series. We're already doing that. Is Call Fifteen? In the meantime, don't you mean seven? Don't you mean Versus Thirteen? Don't shut you the mean fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> actually, okay, but for the majority of the geek community, I actually would like to, for your consideration present to you with the following. I'm going to introduce you in a moment to my lovely wife, who is a gigantic Final Fantasy fan, who's a gigantic Square Enix fan. She's one of the bigger gamers in the family. All right. What? Sweetheart, say hi real quick. Hi. Again? No, just hi. No, hi. All right. <clears throat> Final Fantasy VII Remake. That, ladies and gentlemen, was the general reaction of your traditional Final Fantasy VII fangirls. I don't know. What the I think it's delayed. I think it's... Are you, are you serious? It's, it is delayed. Holy crap. It's okay. It's still recording. Let's go. Just cut okay, the parts whatever. Right. Point is... Right. So the point is, she appears to be not upset. True, but like all other video games, like all other things, you're always going to get that one person out there who's going to complain about uh, something. It hurt. Where's my all next installment? I shot the fuck Excuse up. me. So it's not the right combination of crowd strength and hair. You know what? It's not supposed to look like that. It ripped my childhood. You know what? Everyone I... knows that it reaches an angle of 45 degrees centigrade. All right, all right. In an incline at 32 degrees. You know what? Ruining my childhood. You know, people kept complaining that they were going to make changes to the thing, like they were going to remove the infamous cross-dressing scene. I'm like, honestly, I don't care that much because that was just a gag. And now, after all the bitching and whining, I kind of want them to remove it just so I can hear them scream. <laughs> <laughs> the beautiful thing is, they're not removing it. Yeah, no, they're keeping everything exactly I'm pretty sure the way they are. it is. Dude, Yay! it's fine. It's going to stay like that. And Why? I, because story. It's part of the biggest, story. My biggest question is, what the hell are they going to do with the combat system? Are they going to remain with turn-based combat? Are we going to do the thing where everything turns into Devil May Cry? Because I, I won't lie to you, I would kind of like that. That would be cool. Can we just give this game to Platinum? Uh... We can. In a perfect world, we can't give that to Can we just give every game to Platinum? If only. Can we you just... Know what? I know. Can if, I just if only. Can I just go to the fucking, like, legal office and rename myself from Angel to Bias Platinum Fanboy? All right, let's get this out of the way. We're already... It, 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 thanks for the segue, Angel. Let's talk about Star Fox Zero being headed by Platinum Games. So I should... Holy oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Come on, Angel. Get <laughs> it out. Get it out. So, so, we're going to hop around, by the way, because we weren't done with Squeenix yet. So they're basically think? jumping like crazy here. Yes, we, we have no fucking organization in this thing. So... If anybody's ever played any Platinum games made by Hideki Kamiya, you know the man will find a way to shoehorn a shoot em up section in there. Yep. Every single time, and it's like his personal philosophy. Oh, have you ever played Afterburner? Uh, no, then I'm gonna put it in there so you can see how sick it is! So basically, after uh, a while, no. after making Wonderful 101 and Bayonetta 2 and those two things basically being the best thing ever made on the Wii U for now, 
Shut up, you know I'm right. So basically... (laughs) If you haven't played Wonderful 101, you need to actually play it. I don't play games, but I love the story. It is really, uh, you know, rainbowish. It's rainbow. It's All rainbow. Right, moving along. It's Star- beautiful, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful, Joe. All, All right. right, moving along. Star Fox so, Zero. Star Fox. Oh my God! Star Fox Zero. Holy shit! You actually get to play the actual game, and there's shooting, and there's explosions, and you get to fly around, and you go through the whole roll, and your ship turns into a Metal Gear. In space. Yeah. Your starfighter turns into a Metal Gear. It just grows legs and grows a beak, and then it can like a burma. Shut up! It's a Metal Gear, and the Landmaster that now can fly, so it kind of makes it less of a Landmaster and more like an all terrain master. But shut up! Star Fox Zero. Holy Holy crap! It's beautiful! It's amazing! Do you see this wallet? It's yeah. gone. There's nothing in it. Take my money anyways. <laughs> so now well, that is know. one well, that is one game that I am incredibly stoked for because I'll be honest, I like Star Fox. I well, played Star Fox 64 and holy shit, I got hooked. Holy well, see, shit. Now yeah. you know the feel that we get when we find out Final Fantasy VII was coming back. And when I saw the video, like I can't help but actually I didn't scroll it down. Angel kind of showed it to me. You we're ever. scrolling down to the uh, to the uh, to the comments that these idiots made saying like, "Oh, the uh, video graphics suck." Yep. Oh, it's in comparison to the GameCube. <laughs> 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 That's, That's really mediocre. Mediocre. That's what really pissed me off is that one of them actually compared the graphics to that to that of the GameCube. And okay, once again, no, we're okay. reminded why YouTube comments are uh, scum of the earth. Okay, for the record, um, it, it, for, like from one gamer to another's, um, like going between the Wii U and the GameCube, it's kind of like saying, okay, I like my filet mignon medium rare, and comparing in terms of the GameCube, is like, okay, I want my roast beef sandwich made with boar's head roast beef and freshly sliced. Well, obviously, not... we gotta heal the other guy because fuck him on his roast beef. Yeah, the, like, the thing is, you can't compare one with the other. They're totally separate generations, but that doesn't mean they're exclusively bad, and it doesn't necessarily mean that one is inherently superior to the other. Roast fucking beef by motherfucking boar's head is some tasty-ass shit. So but you guys beef. get what I'm saying. This is a representation of that one person who's gonna come Oh, no, no, no. no. It's yeah, not, I can't it's believe it. No. It's not that one person. It's a bunch of retards. See... Once again, every time I hear somebody make a graphics complaint, I am painfully reminded of how tight the nostalgia Googles can be. Seriously, turn on a GameCube game. An actual GameCube game. Hell, go turn on a PS1. L- look at those graphics. Those big piles of blocks and squares. <laughs> jagging through the environment in a horrible mockery of movement. On the PS- and go, ki- no, in any, in any console that is in this generation. And kindly shut the fuck up. First off, the Wii U was never meant to be a graphics powerhouse. I want my games to be fluid and smooth and fast. They look good. I'm not asking for... When it comes to perfection, that comes like third in my list of important shit when it comes to games. Okay, are you guys... I want gameplay. Can you give me awesome gameplay? Yes. Can you give me fast, smooth, responsive gameplay? Yes. Can you give me something interesting to look at and laugh at? Yes. Am I going to replay this game hundreds of times? Yes. Yes. How important are the graphics? They are not. Not to me. I mean, hey, if you want to make your game look pretty, by all means, be my guest. Okay, are you... Like, just for the record... It, this is Star Fox, okay? We're talking about an anthropomorphic goddamn space furry yep. who leads a team of commando space furries. He's like the best fe- furry ever. And well, fe- and not feather- counting Shadow, but and that's feathers and, fe- <sighs> and, and feathers and a goddamn toad. And they, run around the ga- and they run around the galaxy shooting space aliens who are evil and shit. Okay, the premise of the game enough alone is enough to warn, okay, this is not to be taken seriously. This is for fun. Fucking hell. Are we actually looking for, like, some sort of graphics engine that makes it look like it was, like, rendered into no. real life by industrial light magic? You Are we don't... trying to make <laughs> Star Fox's detail of his whiskers identical to that of a fox? Yes, we are. Are we trying to make his big green eyes of awesomeness actually big and crystallized and crystalline with mirrored reflections? Okay. I'm sorry, I'm too busy power boosting through everything right now. I'm sorry, I'm too busy fucking barrel rolling up in this bitch! Okay, retards. Okay, okay, okay retards. Oh! Just because there's a new Star Fox game, don't expect them to put the fucking fox engine in there. Thank Speaking you. of the Fox Engine! Speaking of the Fox Engine, there Don't was Don't you a... love it when we segue into other games? It's almost as if we planned it this way! No, we didn't. Shut up. <laughs> so, speaking of Subway, um, we here we are standing on the edge of the crater, like the prophets once said. <laughs> and the ashes have gone cold now, and there's a new trailer. And just in case you thought things couldn't be any more depressing, slash creepy, slash what the fuck are you doing with this game, Kojima? Kojima, I know you got fired, and I know it sucks. He didn't get fired. 
He left. They're, they're, oh, they're, sorry. Okay, Kojima, you know, I know you basically decided to screw this whole thing and do your own thing, and you know what? I'm very happy a, for you. He pulled a CM Punk, remember? He took, he took his Metal Gear and went home. Apparently, he decided Not to like take that. all coherency with him, because holy shit, this trailer has stepped straight into the land of what the fuck is going... Okay, guys, say it with me now. Teleporting camouflage <laughs> bold women. <laughs> yes. Okay. They're Wait, bo- what? <laughs> okay. I, I said it, and I still don't understand it. Standing. No, 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 no. On no. the edge. I will unplug this phone. Of the crater. Like that prophet once said. <laughs> of the ashes. Okay, the legend, the gigantic story of Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, is going yes. off the fucking rails. We're the taking fu- off. Okay. Into space. Okay, the Fox Engine. We are finally free in space. <laughs> what the fuck, Kojima? <laughs> <laughs> the fucking, okay, seriously. Okay, we're following into one of the the climactic story, like story points of the Metal Gear franchise. We're finally seeing the demon of outer heaven born at last. Big Boss is big bossing out as boss is boss, 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 boss. 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 like yeah. a boss, Venom like Snake. a motherfucking boss. boss. Venom Snake, leader of the di- basically. Okay, okay, well, go- going back to the trailer. Yeah, there was this amazing speech done by. That was either Revolver Ocelot or Mr. Skullhead. I think it was both of them at the same time. One of the two, yeah. Probably. Doing yeah. this amazing speech about how you can control people by taking away their la- the importance of language and words and how can you control the nation through language or taking it away <laughs> thereof. Eliminating barriers of things like name and status and gender. And Okay, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Basic- but- basically, it's another metaphorical thing of we're creating the world that was unified as the boss herself willed it. Once We're, again, the interpretation of the bosses, the original boss. The original Once boss. Once again, the, her inter- the blonde old, the, the semi-old blonde lady who whipped the ass of everybody, mm. single-handedly won World War II and gave herself a C-section. Somehow. I think she used bullets for it. She used bullets. She shot the baby me. out of her cooch with her gun. Oh, God. It's called the Patriot okay. for a reason. And she, <laughs> this lady is the one who everyone idolizes and wants you know to uphold her dream and shit and everyone's committing horrible atrocities to do so for those, including Zero and Big Boss for those of you who are not quite familiar with the history of Metal Gear let me give you a little snippet the boss's dream before dying horribly at the hands of her student was to create a world without borders to create a world unified unfortunately we never got to hear anything else beyond that and many other characters know that line as a result, the interpretation of the boss's dream, what does it mean, what does it aim for, what is it actually supposed to do with it, has been the motivation and, admittedly, the death of many, many, many characters. Now, and once again, history repeats as another person tries to reenact the boss's dream in their own image, only for shit to go hilariously wrong. And now, it's up to her true pupils, uh, Big Boss, a.k.a. Venom Snake, or Punish... Which is he? Punish Snake or Venom Snake? I think both apply. The point is that he's yeah, growing right. angrier and jadier and cynicaler by the second. Well, now, hang on a minute, guys. Just to timeline this. Now, around Peace Walker... Now, the, at that time, it, it could be argued, you know, Big Boss didn't go about it the wrong way when he started his own, like, military. He, yeah, when he started... Uh, when he started MSF, uh, yeah, Metal on Frontier. It's a step in the right direction. He was Adam. What he was trying to do is like, okay, I'm going to gather all the soldiers in the world together so that we can stand against, you know, political, you know, controls because we want to stand as human beings and we want to fight the fights that we choose instead of being tools and pawns and shit. He was as close as you could get and even he fucked it up! Because the dream is too ambiguous and then at the end of Peace Walker they get a nuke. And they and they literally said, uh, we're just gonna stay out of everything except that you can't. When you obtain the power equal to that of a small nation, you don't stay away from anything whether you like it or not. The moment you have a nuclear weapon, especially back in the 70s, that is when everyone and their mother is staring at you, tapping their Louisville sluggers <laughs> in their opposite hands, waiting to bludgeon your fucking skull off. Yeah, welcome to politics. Regardless though, once again, we look forward to seeing the further... Adventure, I can't even say that because I just know this it's game. It's not an adventure. You know, this, this game is, is going journey. to this game is going to start depressing and it's going to end with suicide watch calls. Now, uh, God. But this also are you has... ready to never smile again? Here's another. Here's... I do. We are. Here's, here's, <laughs> a, here's a more se- here's a more serious question, guys. After this, will this be the end of the Metal Gear series, like for good? Because that. Because the Phantom Pain, it's going to connect everything. Everything's going to come. It's going to go full circle. circle. So the only solution is to remake the original games now. Oh God! Over what? and we already over did that. again. We already no. did that. No, we gotta do it with a fox engine in it. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. But no. we already did the twin snakes. 
Okay. It's a remake of the original Metal Gear Solid. Fine, okay. let's just, okay. let's just go the other others. way. Contact Platinum again and make me fucking revenge in Stu. Yeah! Come okay, on, guys. There's no actual news on that right now. No. But, However. But that's because Platinum's working on everything else for Nintendo right now. <laughs> because Platinum's fucking awesome. Because Platinum is too busy doing fucking everything at this point. <laughs> However, there is news on another game that, that's popular in the Xbox, Wancho. Would you like to take this one? What are you talking about? You mean that tiny thing that came out a while ago with the shooting it's, it's, and the it's, helmets? It's, it, yeah, it's this, it's this stupid little game. It came out, what, what? What are they called? Bungee cord or something? <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> okay, yeah, these guys with the bungee umbilical cords, they came out with this, uh, you know, first person shooter about, you know, um, rings and aliens and blue holographic AI waifus. Oh, I don't know, it's called Halo! Oh, you mean Mass Effect. Oh, sorry. No. Halo! Oh. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> We're coming yeah. to Mass Effect next. No, Mass Effect, don't think happening with Mass Effect. No, point. Exactly! Holy fucking shit! Oh. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Halo. now let's be honest here. <laughs> okay, by the way, we might as well make some shameless plug in. Uh, when we're done with this, guys, I want you, those of you who know about Halo and those of you who do not, I want you to go online and look up for a little web series called Haunt the Truth. Oh, God. I'm not going to tell you what it is about, but I'll just say that it's going to open a few doors and give you a, few, a little insight into the world of Halo. And more importantly, what do you think it takes to make a man like Master Chief? What do you think it makes? What sacrifices? What horrible things have to be done to create a Spartan? The creation of the Spartan. What does it mean to make a Spartan? To take a normal man and turn him into gods of the battlefield. So give that a try. It's a very interesting audio series about, well, hunting for the truth. Might open a couple of kind of worms you don't like to see, but it will give you some insight into that amazing, wonderful world of... Never mind, let's just go to the multiplayer. I gotta tee back somebody. It, it, it tells a story. It'll tell a story that'll further lead into Halo 5. And yeah, speaking Halo of Halo 5, 5... Holy shit! Holy Halo 5! shit! Okay. Alright, number one, Halo fucking 5. You're not just gonna, gonna be... Okay, everyone knows by now, it's a dual storyline. There's something going on with our main hero, the Master Chief, and he is supposedly going renegade. So you also have to play as newer Spartan 4 uh, agent Jameson Locke. As, Who looks like a badass. Yeah, by, yeah the, 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 the actor that they got for him, he also did um, uh, this live action series of Halo. Uh, and he did full motion capture, full you know, everything. All the performance, all him. Looks fucking awesome. This guy is originally an Oni agent. Like, all, like he's basically an undercarry agent for acquisitions and eliminations. Kind of looks like Isaac Clark in uniform from Dead Space. Now, give a guy who's a badass, you know, essentially space CIA assassin, and juice him up and put him in Spartan armor. And now tell him, your first mission with this outfit, you're hunting down the greatest hero the humanity's ever known. Challenge, <laughs> challenge accepted. Yeah, no, this guy, he's like, I don't get, like, he's, he's not putting any prejudice or emotion. He's li literally said, like, every target's always just another target. Yep. All right, well, as you know. As far as he's concerned. Oh, he doesn't have the slightest clue what he's getting into. Okay, Juan, 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 let's actually get into the plot of Halo 5. Like, why don't you tell us the situation? Like, Master Chief, he's basically public enemy number one. Last time so, shit got okay, down. And it's not just him. It's not just him. Because the Halo four, uh, 5 uh, game not only allows you to play as either, as both Master Chief and as Spartan Locke, you also have fire teams that you get to command. Uh, I'm going back to Rogue Squadron here because this actually makes sense. If you remember in Rogue Squadrons 2 and 3 on the GameCube, fuck you guys, GameCube's still fucking cool. If you remember that, the, 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 the D-pad was used as a command cross, as the command center for, you know, sending out orders during specific times in the mission. In this, in the, in the, it, it seems as if they actually adopted that sort of a uh, command system for Halo Five Guardians, where you're actually like when you're running as chief, you're commanding the you're commanding blue team, his old Spartan Two co uh, uh, battle buddies, the only friends he's ever really known, and you're actually commanding them. You actually get to focus on enemies by you know like actually aiming your your rifle at someone, hitting the command, everyone shoot this motherfucker over here, or like okay, everyone disperse this way, or something like that. Or heal this guy by tapping him in your back. Exactly, yeah. So you can heal teammates or you can have everyone focus on one thing or everyone spread out. The same way goes with Spartan Locke. He is com uh, he is working with Fireteam Osiris, uh, who's nothing uh, who is uh, his own personal team of Spartan Fours. He handpicked for this mission. And their objective is basically to hunt down the other team. Yes, their objective is to hunt down the chief. And Master Chief is like, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go save the world now. 
I've got to go save the universe now. Yeah, that's just it. We don't know what the chief is up to. Well, we, that, was, as we left him in Halo Four, he just got through fighting a freaking. Spoiler alert for those of you who do not play or have not played Halo Four. You know we should, fought... we, we should have thrown that disclaimer here before. There's going to be a shit ton of spoilers. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. Guys. In Halo Four, Master Chief was stranded on a uh, on a forerunner world called Requiem, where he inadvertently. Fucking, what do you call it? A bad guy showed up to digitize the world, and he showed the grenade in his chest cavity and exploded. Hang on a minute. So yeah, he blew up uh, the, the the didact, who was a forerunner who was in prison a long time ago. But before then, something happened to the chief that changed him fundamentally. He's already a, a super enhanced, augmented human being with super armor and super strength and everything. But now he's become something a little more. We don't know exactly what kind of changes are done, but we do know for a fact that he's been running with his old uh, uh, friends who are also Spartan 2s, and now they're running on some sort of weird mission. We don't know what they're up to, and neither does the rest of the galaxy, which is why Spartan Locke and his team are hunting them down. I'm actually glad that you brought out that spoiler instead of the other spoiler that's going to crush everyone's heart. Boss, boss, boss. Okay, yeah, we know. The wife is dead. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, Blue yeah. Wife is dead anyway. You know, just in Where case. is she? Oh, by the way, Snake kills Dumbledore, and his name was Rosebud. Duh! <laughs> yep, Rosebud was his sled. What? There, I just saved you two boring boobless hours. Whatever. The point is, we're done with that part, because holy shit, Halo 5 is coming up. It's going to be amazing. There's going to be a lot of shooting, a lot of story, and we're going to ignore everything. We're just going to go to the multiplayer and scream dramatically into our microphone. Because you guys don't know what a fucking good story is, but if it came up, it bit you in the face. Yeah. But any of you who are actually interested in the story, like Angel said... Check out Hunt the Truth on Tumblr. We'll give you a nice, interesting, like, and, other look to what the yeah, hell's going on. I was going to say, to make a correction on Angel's part, his mistake, it's not technically a web show, it's a podcast. Oh, sorry, it's an audio thing. Yeah, it's an audio story. It's okay. All right, it's cool, it's cool. Now, on the chance of something else that may not be as big or quite as massive, uh, Nintendo, aside from showing the, you know, the good old Star Fox Zero thing in there, added a little nice DLC for the Super Smash Bros. role. We got Lucas back, by the Toriador. way. Toriador! Yes! And, of course, we got somebody else. We got somebody who is looking for a challenge! Are you bitches ready for Ryu in this motherfucker? Hadouken! No, no, no. Show you again! That works, too. So, yeah, interesting. Apparently, oh, here's the funny, the beautiful thing, though. Okay, you know, guys, how Ryu is basically, in every fighting game, like the simplest character to use, right? Right. He's the basic guy, right? He's the Ryu. Ryu is the Ryu. Of no, he, he's the most complicated character to use in the game. <laughs> Because, okay, you can do the moves normally, but if you do the actual motions with the actual controller, his moves get different properties and they get stronger. Nice. Like, they, they, if you do the Shoryuken normally, it's just Shoryuken, but if you do it like an actual Shoryuken, you get invincibility frames. Holy crap! And don't quote me on this, but we, we might be getting Yakuza 5 eventually. Which is looking pretty cool. Which is what? Yakuza 5. It's yes. looking pretty cool. Hells yeah, brah. Alright, you know what? Let's get back onto the Squeenix topic. Let's get it out. Let's talk about... Kingdom hey Hearts. guys, Kingdom Hearts 3 is going Kingdom out! Three! Holy shit! Okay, you, you, Michael... It's you, the game that everyone's been waiting for since how many years? Ten, <laughs> over ten, ten years, years now. We waited ten years for a one minute trailer and our dicks were over so satisfied. <laughs> Michael, we're gonna let you talk because you've been all quiet mousy and shit, come on. Say I something, little, say right. something or you're fired. Alright, uh, the first thing I want to, uh, you know, just shout out my, my, my off about th- uh, 3 is that, well, the first time I saw that trailer... I literally squealed at the top of my lungs. Go ahead and show. I literally just. All right. Um. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Prepare so... your eardrums. Here comes more screaming and fanboying. All right. Finish washes. Finish watching. Watching the, the the trailer. <laughs> I kid Holy you not. Shit. We live next door to this. We thought that somebody killed a little girl. No offense. What? Fun fact. Dance. Actually, somebody did call a little girl somewhere. But the point is Her that name really is Kyrie. Kyrie. Oh, <laughs> And holy crap, we got some gameplay. We got some actual honest to goodness gameplay. Uh, let's see. We Are you ready to use your Keyblade as a gun? Are you ready to use your Keyblade as two guns that then turn into a bigger gun, that then turn into a Disney ride, that then turns into a javelin, that then turns into a train? Are you literally. Are you ready to literally summon the hype train <laughs> of the game in order to plow down Heartless? Are you ready to go to the World Tangle? Yeah, we are. It's actually a very nice, pleasant movie. Oh, man. I- yeah. When I saw the video, one I got drink. hooked. I like that one, one scene where um, one where Sora's drink. fighting this giant one horde drink. of heartless. When will my life begin? By the way, Tangle's been talk? confirmed. <laughs> so yeah, we get Tangle with the tower and everything, and uh, the other stage that we saw, it appears to be the Olympus Coliseum land, but bigger and better. 
Which is honestly a blessing at this point because I don't know you guys, but I'm getting real fucking tired of going into that coliseum. I seriously do hope that they hurry up and like I'm not trying to sound hasty or anything, but I seriously do hope they hurry up and complete the entire game because let's be honest, we've been holding on for years, and all we're getting is nothing but other games, you know, like 358 over two spin-offs for everybody. Spin-offs and spin-offs and spin-offs and spin-offs and spin-offs. spin-offs. Although I have no room to complain, I kind of enjoyed 358 over two. Eh, Birth by Sleep was pretty damn good. Uh, it was okay, it was okay for, uh, in my opinion, I guess. Like it works. the the number one big one that people really seem to like so far is the one that actually uh, the the side quest game that actually furthers the story, Dream Drop Distance. You know, because you get to play as Riku, everybody's fucking favorite white-haired beastie boy. I don't care how much people like it, that dream drop mechanic was complete garbage. I don't give a damn. <laughs> that was fucking fun. The story is incredible. Hang on, we need more story in this. We got some Inception shit going on. <laughs> okay, literally. Okay, it's tr- it's Kingdom Hearts plus Inception. That's all you really need to know. If you've never seen Inception, be sure to do it with a full... Bottle, belly full of caffeine. No, with a bottle of alcohol and sleeping pills. That's the only way to enjoy the movie, man. Okay, we have one question for everyone who's listening to The Black Files right now. How did you get here? Oh my This is God. very important. You need to yeah. focus and concentrate. How yeah. did you get to this spot in the podcast? Get the hell out of here, man. Let's get to the other Clean game. The <laughs> Clean God the crumbs of hot poker of your shield. All right. All right, all right. Let's get, to, let's get to the other games. How about... Far away. All right, everyone. <laughs> other games. What about um? What about Fallout 4? Fallout 4 is looking <laughs> fantastic. Yep, I, like, I've actually only just started figuring out about Fallout 4. Um, yes, kill me later. I've never played Fallout. Screw you, I have a life. I played Fallout 3. That was the only game I ever played with. Uh, what's his name? Butcher Sam. You guys remember Butcher Sam? Yeah. Hi, Butcher Sam. Yeah. Continue. Motherfucker. Play- Played it with him. It was pretty fun. It was pretty cool. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. All I know is that at the end of the day, I punched a, Ryan, a giant radioactive roach to death. So that's a good game in my book. It is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It is. <laughs> and 4 is looking fantastic. They oh, introduced awesome. this crazy mechanic where apparently you build your own towns. And you can save people from marauders that you breed in your own towns. And towns, 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 towns. towns, 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 towns but I don't towns, care. Towns for days, son. Towns, 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 you get a dog. Yes. Of course towns, you get a dog. Towns, Hell towns. yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, no, seriously, Fallout, Fallout 4 looking very nice. Is it wrong that I say that when I saw that picture of the dude with the dog, like, walking off, all I can think about <sighs> is that teaser trailer to Revengeance where he sees Raiden walking out with Blade Wolf? Use Blade your Wolf. intellect, obey yeah. the nuke. You know which one I'm talking about. No, I'm t- stop reminding me that Revengeance 2 hasn't come out yet. So, uh, uh, and in things, that, in things that haven't appeared on E3, but appeared a while ago, the Oh My Cry 4 Special Edition featuring <laughs> Virgil from the Demo Cry featuring series. Virgil okay, the everyone, Virgil. everyone, everyone before, before we get to it, let's all take deep breaths right now. Right this now. party's getting crazy! Let's rock! So yeah, I got to say, I, know, uh, I don't have the game yet, sadly. I'm, I'm saving to get my hands on the game. And we got to see this amazing Twitch stream, uh, two hour long. Of a dude playing the game with a company or another, no other than Mr. Ruben Lando, who you may know as the guy who made craving, shaving cream commercials in Japan. So, what was his take on it? He likes it. It's cool. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so yeah, loves it. Dude, no. that was the, that was the most anticlimactic. This guy's the fucking voice of Dante from the Dark oh! Knight series. Oh, so of course he's gonna like it. <laughs> Regardless, though, it was pretty damn good. Apparently, he had dinner with Daniel Southward or whatever. So the game was great. Um, no much change on the story. You get to play as Virgil. You get to play as da- uh, Dante. You get to play as Nero. You get to play as Lady. You get to play as Trish. Trish. Now, Trish. for clarification on the Virgil part, if, in case you guys are interested in what his role is going to be in this story, um, I think we've had a discussion about this, Angel. Like, we basically... All we know is that it's a prequel. Like, his it's, yeah, story a, happens years before the events of the game. Which makes sense because how else are you going to explain the bad guys in Fortuna having possession of his sword? That too. In fact, that might be the explanation. But regardless, the game plays fantastic. The tweaks are amazing. Burgess' new concentration mechanic makes him so stupidly overpowered that he plays... He plays like... How do I put this? You guys remember back in Don't My Cry 3 when Burgess was the boss? Yes. And you had to fight him. And you look at yourself with all the upgrades and the weapons and the shit. And you look at the other guy and go, I still wish I was the other guy. 
Yeah. Now you're then the older you guy. Then you are. You are the older guy. Okay, it's just like when everyone was cr- uh, was crying out when they saw Metal Gear Solid 4, and they saw Raiden breakdance fighting against a Now bunch everybody of wants to be Raiden. <laughs> now everybody wants to be Raiden. But then, then the game came out, and everybody's like, it's the snake ruined forever, and I'm like, shut uh, up. You asked for fun. Cyborg Ninja. <laughs> Your game, Cyborg, Cyborg Ninja. Cyborg fucking Ninja. ninja. Shut now, up. Now, to, to get into the game mechanics the of What's using Virgil, first off, that fucking motivation meter. <laughs> yeah, they call it concentration, but let's be honest, it's called the motivation meter. Now, now I'm more motivated. Anytime you miss a hit or you get hit or you run, it you goes down. You're actually angst. Anytime Your that you walk... Your angst wa- drives you. <laughs> anytime, <laughs> anytime you do, you walk stoically like a badass, perform badass combos and just taunt your enemies like usual, the meter goes off. <sighs> the higher it goes, the more damage you do and you get access to some insane bullshit over the top attacks. Would you? Okay, remember the judgment cut? Yeah. You are the judgment cut. Nice. And Lady You Blade. are the hype. Yeah. Now Lady there are other the there are other characters that you can unlock in the special edition that you can play as. You yeah. can play as Trish and you can play as Lady. Yeah. Trish plays a bit of how do I put this? She uses lightning as a charge move. Maximum damage when full charge, not so much damage. But she can set up traps. Kinda like her Marvel Scar Country incarnation. I was gonna say, since she fights with the Sparta Sword, does she do you also get to use Devil Trigger? Yeah, of course. She fights with the Sparta. She's a demon, remember? She mostly basically overcharges herself with lightning. Also she fights with her hands and fists. And Lady can only be described as a really, really aggressive, versatile version of Gunslinger. Just guns for days, and instead of Devil Trigger, she just shits explosives all over the arena. Yes. And you know what? It is fucking cool. Yes. And yeah, the action boner has been fulfilled to the max with my concentration meter. Wait, um, wait, God, Angel, speaking Angel. of boners, Michael, chill down. I know we're talking about games, but no. you need to relax. No, he jeans. You are a young more. man. I know that this is a very perilous time for you, but you have to understand. You need to break down the teepee in your pants. You have to banish the Apaches in your oh pants. Oh my god. Okay, enough okay, Apaches. I can't, I, no. Hang on, I just, guys. I can't, I, can't, I can't get over it. I no, I need my brother to be made of fucking flubber right now. Flubber! <laughs> it's flubber! It's gay. Wait, Angel, one question I want to ask you. Another thing we talked about. In the special edition of Devil May Cry 4, didn't you mention something about an unlockable attire that's based from oh, the reboot of DMC? I can't remember oh, if it's unlockable oh, or a pre-order geez, bonus, really? but yes. Tell, if, tell. if you get the bonus, I don't know if it's unlockable or pre-order, but Dante basically goes around with a white shirt, a dirty, faded, red and brown coat, and a black hairdo. And you know what? He still pulls it off better. Oh! <laughs> Can you say Metal Finger to Ninja Theory? Sorry, Ninja Theory, you had a good idea, but then you went and tried to... Guys, not in a million years. (laughs) Nice! I actually took the time to... You know, no, I I gotta be honest with you guys. Yeah, we already iterated our opinion on DMC here, but let's make it clear and simple. It is a decent hack and slash. It is a pretty shitty Devil May Cry game. That's all there is to it. It's and f- don't think too hard about the story, or your head will fucking break. Oh, I, I, no, no, he's not kidding. I was one of the few people who tried to take this you know, stair, you know, this squared cutout. You of tried Devil May Cry so and hard, I tried to and cut that's it so circle. far. But and, in the end, yeah, it doesn't even, even matter, matter anymore. I, 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 God Almighty! I'm sorry. I wasn't even like I wasn't even hooked at the very first trailer that came out where they go, "What is your name?" Actually, I, I was kind of excited for the idea of it, but they went so fucking far off canon. They went so far off on the fucking attitude of the story and, and everything. Yeah. It, it didn't make sense. I was one of the few people who took this squared peg and tried it to sli- f- put it into a round you hole. You tried to sting her into I, that hole with everything you had, and, and you just bounced off. And everything in my power, like in my own storytelling ability... I've done everything in my power to do so, and I got close. You got but close. the problem is, the characters in DMC are not the same characters of the Devil May Cry franchise. They are uh, so hilariously it's just, unlikable. It's just, I was going to say, I would like to compete against that, only for the sake of Virgil. Everything was okay. No, everything, no, 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 no. Everything was no. okay with Virgil, even his... <laughs> <laughs> no. He yeah, okay is putting it, uh, okay yeah, is putting sure, it lightly. I'm being dude, nice here. Dude. Yeah, sure, everything. The hat. That was the only, that's the only thing I'm arguing against. It was Everything so bad. was good up to the hat. It was so bad that they removed it in the definitive edition. Definitive they actually edition. took oh the God, whole thing. Wow. And yes. Yeah. And then, you know what? Okay, okay, being Devil May Cry, I honestly didn't go in there for the story. It's Devil May Cry. You don't go into the, you don't go into a game made by the dudes that eventually become platinum for the story. Okay? I, I, w- did, I went in there. And it works. I went in there for the gameplay. I put it in the normal difficulty. Which Devil May Cry 3 kicked my ass until I got good. <laughs> uh, I got one demonic... Ooh. So far, the game is pretty easy. Okay, this game is pretty easy. I'm guessing it's going to get harder. I get one demonic weapon. I do one combo, and I go all the way to triple S. 
I put the controller down, I sit on my bed, and I stare at the wall for three hours. That was it. <laughs> and the rest of the... I wish I could say the rest of the game gets more difficult, but it doesn't. Because he kept it, six, smoked six silage on it. It just keeps getting easier Savage. and easier. I killed, the fi- I killed the final boss in 30 Super seconds. Sauce. Then I went to YouTube and I found out you can kill him in 11 seconds. But you know what? 11 seconds! But you know what? DMC is now irrelevant because of the special edition of Don't Make Cry. It War. is now gone with the wind and hopefully never to come back. And, and here's what and I here's heard Ninja Theory is doing a different action game maybe they'll do better this time that they're not shackled to an existing franchise and they can just work on their own thing because let's be honest the biggest problem DMC has is that it's supposed it's to be too easy. No, no, well, it's that. trying to be Devil, Devil May Cry it's that it's called Devil May Cry yeah. if he could use his own thing honestly really change the names around don't give everybody the same names uh, don't don't make any allusions to demons make allusions to magic just, honestly just change the names change the story change the name of the game say that it was inspired by Devil May Cry yeah, yeah, exactly. It's Simple. inspired. A, a, a love letter to Devil May Cry. That we could have all gotten behind. Like, okay, you're fans of this kind of story. Good for you. You're That's fans your of this thing. kind of game. Good for you. Do that. But don't ever try to call this Devil May Cry. It's just like that... Okay, it's just like that retarded uh, the, uh, book franchise. Yes, I call it that because I don't like it. I've read it and it sucks. Don't the call Fifty those. Shades of Fail. Don't call that romance. That's just abusive relationships 101. Yeah, and, yeah. and, the, and the new re-release book, the supplemental book called Grey, where you have the full wait, story. Wait, wait a fucking second. Okay, wait, no, 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 no. You stop right now. Are you telling me Fifty Shades of Grey has supplemental material? Oh, okay. oh, no. It just came out. And basically what they did was they retold the first story and part of the second through the eyes of the dude who's supposed to be this like he was always portrayed as like a mysterious honky domineering you know, like businessman who's a billionaire and he's so and he's so fucking like cool and suave and shit but you not know what happened you want to know what happened it's simple <laughs> you're all going to laugh you got to see his personality and then you realize, wait a minute, this guy's got the personality of a wet mop. So this is a man. No, he's... he's no, this is a piece of wood that is hey, definitely... No, no, no. Are we talking about DMC or are we talking about Fifty Shades of Grey? I'm not quite sure about Fifty Shades of Grey right now. Actually, the, kind of dude, we're deviating off here. Who no, gives okay, a fuck about okay, Fifty Shades of Grey? It, it bears relevance to the point here. The point we're trying to say is... To be okay, fair, the romance in DMC is in depth comparable to Fifty Shades of Grey. Exactly. No, like the the point is that that it turned around and flipped the story and told it from this guy's point of view, and he's basically moping about everybody not getting shit just exactly the right way, Ugh. and, and not, not moping, but just like angsting, like ah, oh, this is so fucking annoying. God, this girl can't even orgasm right. I am okay. so rich and amazing. Oh God, why is my dick so huge? I can't handle this. Right. I wish I had a woman that I could break and mold with my amazing richness and dull personality. Okay, now take this hey, kind of dull personality and make him your main character. And then call him Dante. That's what we got! We got Dante Gray! Don't you mean Dino? <laughs> Dino. Yeah, wow. Dante in name. name only. Dino Gray. There we go. Oh, and the, yes, they removed the wig scene, too. All right, you know what? Let's wrap this up. Let's all just agree that wow. DMC will forever be, in our eyes, a total piece of shit. And for some of you out there, if you guys like it, then good for you. I mean, no, not I good for you. What is wrong with it's you? It's fine to play, but don't treat it as Devil May Cry. I, 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 don't treat it exactly I'm astonished like and surprised game. at your ability to tolerate a game like that. I played the whole thing, and by the end... Hang on. Let me, oh yeah, I remember this part. I, this is more, one of my favorite parts. I remember I played it back at your place when you guys got it a while yeah. ago. There was a mission. You fell asleep for 10 minutes. And then you sat back and you woke up and you said, what happened? And I'm like, the game just ended. <laughs> it was the final mission. And it was, it was so fucking dull that I just didn't feel like waking you up. I actually fell asleep during the grand climactic finale of the game. You actually laid out... You weren't even tired. You didn't work that day. You sat on the couch with a, like a bowl of flakes. You were looking at it going, okay, let's see what happens. I turn around to look at you after the cutscene's over. You're just dead. You're a corpse. And I'm just looking at him and going, you bastard. How could you leave me behind? <laughs> I'm boy. sorry! You. The fight... And no, here's the beautiful thing, though. I died on the fight because Dante kept clipping through the building and falling into the abyss. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You have to like attack the hands to reveal the weak point for massive damage. God, somebody! I did a raid. stinger and I flew off the building and I kept respawning at the edge of the building that made me clip through the geometry. And this is not the first time this happened. This game is buggy as hell. Somebody get a can of raid on this game for Christ's sake! Just oh. falling through walls, man. 
We do have one, a couple of things we want. Oh, wait, one last thing, too. Here's the best part, though. All right, go every on. Day, we got to keep the ball going. Every action, ga- every action game has a rival character. You know, my cry has Virgil, Bayonetta has John. Wonder for 101 has uh, Quinton Flynn. Yeah. 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 Right, well, this game obviously has a rival. And it's this demon with a red mask and twin swords and a skirt made of black feathers and shit like that. Here's the bad thing. This dude has no dialogue. He gets two little cutscenes to show up, and then he dies. Oh. He is such a dull, worthless excuse for a rival, I don't even remember its name. Oh, God. It's not even a person. Well, you know what? That's irrelevant. Just like the game, that character is irrelevant, and let's just yeah. leave it at that. Right. Let's never talk about shit games. Actually, we're going to just keep talking about you shit know, games. No, no, just, wait until, the, just wait until the next episode of Black Files when we spend two hours talking about Sonic 2006. Ah! Shut, up! Ah! Shut the fuck and up! And get burned! How do you... Okay, yeah, there wasn't no. water! You're not drowning in water, you're floating through blue space! It's what so stupid! Oh, my God! Okay. My eyes! All right. It's in my eyes! Ah! Ah! Alright, bad games scream. aside. Bad games aside. Everyone, breathe. Breathe. Okay, okay. Ah! okay. Michael. Michael. Seriously, breathe. Michael, calm down. Breathe. I can't. Oh my god! How is a 12 year old getting a heart attack? Yes! Yeah, Sonic 2006 is giving him a heart attack! Silencio! Ah! Por favor! Okay, Sorry, breathe. you just made me talk to Don't bed. walk into the light! Walk away from the light! Walk away from but the loading me, screens! But if I walk oh, into god. the light, I mean. No, if you walk in the light, you're gonna die! You're gonna all right, die! Alright, 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 alright. That's right. enough! That's enough! Michael! Michael! Okay, Michael. okay. enough! All right, flying into okay. free aside from the sensational bullcrap that that was. I hope you guys E3 enjoyed the... some good things. Yes, I hope okay. you guys are enjoyed the E three conference. I hope you guys are psyched for these new games that are coming out. We're not. We're, there's there's one important factor that we're not addressing, and I'm surprised that you're trying to wrap us up. And what's the factor? Microsoft Hololens. The moment I saw it, the moment I saw them actually running it out oh, for the three, for the Xbox One. Okay, for those of you who don't know. They're working on on uh, on uh, on virtual reality headset uh, supplements for their console over at uh, over at Microsoft. The uh, the end result, the Microsoft Hololens, which actually brings your the, the display of your video games out in the real world. The uh, the uh, the game that they use as an example, none other than the fan favorite Minecraft. They actually uh, uh, they actually finished. don't you mean Legoland? Ugh. Like, the, yeah, it's like, basically uh, Legoland. Uh, With adventuring, who cares? No, okay. think about it. Well, it's Legoland where all the pieces fit everywhere. True. All right, let's get to the hot okay. ones. Okay, okay. Basically, instead of like they started with a flat display against a wall, where um they actually showed the gentleman playing uh through the uh, through his custom world, and you know the wall was just acting as his screen. No one else sees the wall, but since he's you, you're seeing the wall through his visor, uh, and we had a special camera thanks to awesomeness at Microsoft. Everyone who was in the in attendance could see on the big screen. Then what he decided to do was the stuff of legend. He went over to a table. He moved the display into the table and he said build world. The result? The actual full gaming map on Minecraft populated on the fucking table in 3D. You could, he could actually zoom in Tony Stark style through this uh, uh, this all, uh, augmented reality version of his world and zoom into it and he could actually move and display his people and he could see them and all the surrounding area. You're not stuck with third person anymore. You're stuck. No, you get a fucking gorgeous third person omnim- omniscient viewpoint of your game. You get to see the entire gaming map. It's fucking brilliant. And the one thing I'm asking now, and putting this letter out to Konami, where the hell are my children's card games? We have no excuses anymore. Yes, we do. It's called Microsoft. It's not working with Konami yet. Microsoft needs to work with Konami right now. We've got Tupac Shakur back from the dead and Miku Hatsune dancing around. They're both performing back-to-back concerts on a hologram for people to see. And now we've got augmented reality helmets for people just like in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V. No, we're not done yet. we got to put it on our motorcycle now. Hang on, guys. We'll put it on the motorcycle soon, but the point is this. I was going to say, Microsoft can only do so much. No, No, they need to do more. No. We need to play fucking card games now. I, no, there's no excuses anymore. There are no excuses anymore. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Now, I understand that sometimes my baby... Okay, let me throw an excuse. There is literally thousands of cards. It's going to take a while to model that. But let me give you one that is less of an excuse. Where are our Pokemon games? 
Oh, fucking really? Seriously? Okay. I yeah. know. Yeah. I, I know that there's no longer only 150. I know we're in the hundreds now. But that should be enough to model a few things. Uh, just enough. Like, why I'm not, just saying. Why not have... I want to throw my balls at people and have giant monsters come out of them. Like, it happens in real life. Like, holographic Charizard against the holographic Blastoise in your virtual reality visors. You can actually use a control... Okay, select Charizard. So, like, like, no, 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 like, no, no, okay, no, 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 what? Bluetooth. Audio orders. Yes. Charizard, use flamethrower! Charizard uses fly. We, we gotta do a few updates. Oh, okay. God. Oh, yeah, there's still a couple bugs, but okay, we're, we're working on it. Oh, you the know, point is, it could happen. It we could do happen. that. We could do the same with, with Yu-Gi-Oh! I want my children's card games. Wait, we, we need to discuss MetroCon. Uh, well, discussed- I was gonna say, Juan, it's funny you brought up Yu-Gi-Oh! Because of your duel... With Seto Kaiba. Ah! The number one duelist in the entire world! Shut no, the no, fuck no, up! Okay, no, no guys, you need guys, me to break out the formula again? I'll break out the formula. Guys, no, 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 no. guys it's fine, it's fine. We're not we'll gonna, save that for another podcast. We're, gonna, we're not going to go into the specifics of that and Juancho's incredibly humiliating defeat that may or may have not happened. No, it happened. There's photographic proof. Okay, he got his ass kicked. But he did good. He, he put on a good showing until things happened. The point is, there was a duel and shit went bad. So in order to recover the lost and shattered honor of our pride, by the way, we're filming, the, we're recording this from a, basically a cardboard box because that girl took our house. So to recover the broken and busted so, uh, honor that Samantha Petron has robbed us from, that Samantha Petrol Oil has taken from us. Petrol Oil, dude, get it right. Wow, Angel, how do you keep fucking up these days? I will remember eventually. The point is that our fearless leader is eventually taking the deck to train, so he can challenge her, and hopefully, I can get my room back one of these days. Yeah. So you know, it only you know, no disrespect towards Wancho, but I think it only seems appropriate that the leader of the Ravens flock goes toe to toe with the number one duelist. Okay, number one duelist. Okay. No, fucking okay. Number one, fuck you. This whole time that we were, <laughs> the whole time we were there at Metrocon, I was dueling Samantha Patron dressed as Seto Kaiba, not actually Seto Kaiba. <laughs> and this whole time, your ass was cheering for her. What the fuck kind of fearless leader does that? You freaking backstab my ass. Hey, I'm gonna kill you for he that. He said he was the fearless leader, not the loyal one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking, what if I take my loyalty and take my hardware and my fucking camera and my studio shit and say, fuck you, go back to your bedroom and film this shit on a webcam. Let's see loyalty then, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. calm down, dude. Let's not turn this into a Jerry Springer fight. No, no this, this isn't is... a Jerry Springer fight. That's a fact. No, this is straight up blackmail. <laughs> but, regardless, <laughs> but regardless, Metrocon happened and a little shit went down. A lot of you shit went down. You explained that because I, was, I, I stayed in the hotel room the whole day because I, I was feeling I, sick. I got this. You weren't even there. I was feeling really fucking sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways. You have no idea how sick I was. Lots of shit met, happened at Metricon. Okay. Me and Juan, we were only there Saturday covering, uh, doing okay. our usual business. We were just doing coverage and stuff. And uh, I've been keeping up with the news feeds. First off, a lot of people on the Metricon, uh, on the Metricon group page of Facebook uh, were allegedly bitching about not being naked during the Saturday Night Rave. And it's basically a bunch of preteens just bitching about not being naked. So... Naked Con almost... Well, actually, no. Naked Con didn't even get a chance. This is the reason why curfews exist. Because you people keep saying stupid shit like this. It's okay. It's part of growing up. As a teenager, you understand that eventually you will look... Listen, man. Let me give you our beautiful, beautiful listeners here a little... <laughs> let, let me give you... There you go. Listen, man. Everyone. All 15... All 43 of our subscribers. All 43 we love you guys. We love you guys. You Whoever the hell you people We know there was one subscriber who, was, who liked us, but then that person left because... I don't know. Do we reason. have to bring that up? No. no. I'm just saying, like, okay, Reasons. Fine. Fair flocks. Whatever. The point is, here's the thing. Let me explain to you people the meaning of wisdom. Wisdom is looking back at two years before yourself. Look at yourself. Now, right now, if you're listening, look at yourself one year ago and think of all the stupid shit you did. When you th- when you think, man, that was fucking stupid. I will never do that again. That is wisdom. Two years from now, we're going to repeat the same thing all over again. Repeat. Welcome to life. But can I top that? Apparently, there was a fight that broke out between a drunken hockey fa- uh, fan from, for Tampa Bay Lightning against the con goer. Guess who won that fight? Nobody. Uh, gee, let me think. Nobody. <laughs> gee, let me think. Was it the giant person who I was... have returned. Yeah, Michael had to go back and brush his teethers, and he had to make sure he used what? the orange LP. He, he had to make sure... The that- drunken guy won. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pancho, I had to smash that. Shut the fuck up, you <laughs> suck. The I'm drunk- all your... 
Like, okay, everyone knows that and whenever we're talking about cra- uh, crap with each other on the, uh, uh, in the Ravens flock or on the Black Files or any other pro- uh, show that we do, one of the number one things that we do is we'd appreciate each other. You don't fucking cut me off while I'm breaking it down on Michael. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, don't do so oh. from insulting me. Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. The drunken guy won the fight. Well, then again, he was drunk. People do. People go ballistic when they're drunk. But that yeah. doesn't mean that they should necessarily have the ability to win. No, that no, just no. means they have no inhibition no, and don't like, care about how hard they're hitting. It's like being infected being with hit. berserk. Your strength goes up, your agility goes to shit. <laughs> True. Oh, I was actually hoping that the Congor won the fight. Oh, wait, why are we talking about Welcome this? Welcome to real life. The underdog <laughs> doesn't always win. Wow. Yeah, okay. during the same time of Metricon, there was also this hockey game going on in Tampa between Tampa Bay Lightning and the Chicago Blackhawks. Go back to Canada. Well, what was it? Game oh, yeah. four? Five. Five? Of the Stanley Cups. Oh, yeah. Four. Uh, Stanley we Cup didn't read too much about it. All we know is that Chicago's whooping Tampa Bay's... Well, Chicago whooped. Tampa Bay's ass at this point. Unfortunately, I, I yeah, it's, I can't everybody remember. around here is fleeing up north to Illinois because everyone in Tampa is ashamed. We're officially filled with a town full of losers. I can't help but to losers, <laughs> guys. I can't help but to wonder if, when it comes to the realm of sports, our our city might not be doing too hot. <laughs> like the thing is, just that- saying that maybe, just maybe, being raised in a land made of swamp and alligators might not have honed our baseball, football, slash hockey skills as well as it should. Okay, see, here's the thing. Do we even have a baseball team anymore? Or the yes, the Tampa team? Bay Rays. How, yeah. how well do they do? Uh, yeah. They're horrible! Okay. Not exactly <laughs> filling me with confidence here, guys. Okay. okay. Don't okay. worry, they're, they're, they're bad, but they're not Buccaneers. No, you need, we, we gotta show them some fucking it's baseball anime. See how that works out. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers plowed through a historic landmark of a shopping mall that was next to their stadium for the sole purpose of building a training center that would be worthy of Super Bowl winners. And then they, they lost again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. 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 Okay, you get the idea. They lost ad nauseum and they will keep losing. It's like a fucking physical constant. Well, the law of gravity is that the Buccaneers lose the shit. Back to the Metricon subject. I hope you, I hope for those of you who went for the four day weekend, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you got pictures of the fight because we want to see it. Send it to us. I hope you guys enjoyed the shows for what it's worth. And, uh,. Honestly, there's really not much more for me to say about nope. Metricon. Like That's I said, it. me and Juan, we were only there for Saturday. We officially yeah. ran out of good news. E3 came out, some good shit showed up. Xbox One is now backwards compatible. Congratulations to the users. Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy VII Remake coming out, so uh, prepare your wallets. Nintendo doesn't need to screw with anything, but they're coming out with fun games, which is also awesome. Of Absolutely. course. Oh my god, Star Fox Zero! <laughs> and let me plug this in right now for our uh, local listeners out there. Uh, June 27th, there's going to be a show over at the Tampa Picture Show, hosted by the Crazy Random Happenstance. It's going to be a summer variety show, which not only features for CRH, but also Pleasure Pixels. They'll be doing two performances. And, um, the Shinobi School. They're going to be doing a whole bunch of, like, yep. aerial stuff. Yeah, one, one, of our, one of our buddies here, Christopher Shinobi, if I remember his name correctly. His name is actually that. Yeah, let's he, just call him Shinobi. That's like Shinobi. Be awesome. Okay, fine. Shinobi's his name. All right, he has put together his own uh, troupe of acrobatic martial arts performance art. It's so it's a, it's a combination of. It comes know, from the village hidden in the swamp. Not really. No. Shut <laughs> up, Angel. <laughs> Dude, no. The point, what is his ninja way? No, the point. The point is, he's come up with a unique style of entertainment that combines martial arts and dance art form and fucking everything else in their mother. So it looks fucking awesome. And I'm actually, I, I wish to God that I could go. I don't know if I'm going. So you know, here's hoping to see people there if I can even go. I think the show starts at 11:30 over at the Tampa Picture Show here in Tampa. If you get a chance to go, please do so. Support the uh, support the casts who are going to be there performing for you guys. Support CRH, support Pixels, support By the way, just support support everything. By the way, you support are now cute. You are now acutely aware this is an extra long episode of the Black Box. Because it's filled with good news. Exactly. And in somewhat, well, somewhat less connected news, go watch more anime, I guess. Go watch Fate Stay Night on Limited Play Works. Get oh my god, go. get your head out of that. It's pretty good. Don't tell me it wasn't good. It was alright. It was damn good. Shut your fucking face. <laughs> yeah. So, in short, we covered... Many of the major games that are coming out, you know, we covered uh, we we covered the, the Star Wars Battlefront, Halo Five, Fallout re- Four, Fallout Four. Um, let's see, the remake of Final Fantasy VII that they announced, Kingdom Hearts Three. Wait, did I hear Kingdom Hearts Three? Kingdom Hearts. Ah! Kingdom Hearts 3! Right, Kingdom Hearts Three. So thank you again, sweetheart. Anyway, everything... I didn't need my eardrums. <sighs> no, you didn't. Everything is fine oh, and dandy over here. We've basically talked about all the new games that we knew that were, that just came that's coming out soon. And if there's anything that we do leave out, again, just drop us a line, reply to us on our videos, and we'll promptly ignore your ass. 
Ah. And we'll kindly respond to you if your uh, questions are intelligent questions. If you're just going to So come we'll promptly ignore all your asses. Yes. So, so wow. co- like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Stay away from Tumblr. No, join our Stay Tumblr page, which, Tumblr. by the way, we started posting exclusive uh, content on Tumblr. Oh. This is the Trina Nishimura full interview from our FAE episode. That was fun. We're going to become more active on our Tumblr page, so stay tuned for more content to be on that. Uh, this will site. be the last episode you ever hear of The Black Files. I will never show up here again. Yes, you will. <laughs> yes, you have you a will. contract. Well, you I don't want my to... blood. Wait a minute, what? Well, we ran out of ink. No, he has a seven-year contract. Anyways, thank you for tuning in for this edition of The Black Files, and we are out.